know about you, but I've always wanted to be in the mob. <laughs> and now that I am, it's fantastic. The cocaine, the women, the town hall health care protests. I don't remember seeing those in any of those great mob movies, but <laughs> here's the one thing tonight. This is not a GOP mob or a manufactured anger in America. What's happening is America, Democrat, Republican, and Independent, senses in her gut that something is not right, and something isn't right with the health care plan. The polls reflect that. 65% say Obama is taking on too many issues. His approval is at 50%, now worse than Bush's was after the first six months. He has fallen seven points with independents, 45 approve, 45 disapprove. 52% oppose how he's handling health care, 39% approve. More than three out of four think his plan will add to the deficit. That is important. Listen to it again. Three out of four think this plan will add to the deficit. Remember that stat. Why the decline? America, I think it's because you know something is wrong. When somebody tries to rush you, that's when you need to slow down. I also think you're seeing enough things now that you uh, that concern you, but you don't know how to put them all together. I'm going to try to put a few things together tonight and then over the next few days, but I'm telling you. You know, I feel like, you ever see those movies where they, um, where they say, uh, I gave a note to my attorney, and if, I, uh, if I'm found dead, open the note. I kind of feel like you're my attorney. If I show up, you know, in Thailand, dead from autoerotic asphyxiation, <laughs> don't believe it. Since when are the politicians the ones who guide our ethics and our morals? Do you remember when we had the guy from Acorn on, uh, I don't even remember it was, four or five months ago, and he was so arrogant, and it bothered me. I'm a thread guy. I'll see a thread sitting there, and I'll, I'll say, wait a minute, that's not right, and I'll start to pull it. I pulled that thread based on that one interview and you saw what it's taken us into ACORN. ACORN and the President and AmeriCorps and all of it, we are building a new structure in our country. Well, the other day I had the AARP people here and I said, how can you possibly be for health care? And they said, oh, we don't see anything hurtful in, to seniors in that health care package. It looks great to us. And it, to me that sounded the same as <laughs> Glenn, I just found out I'm related to a Nigerian prince. He's going to wire me $10 million. All I have to do is give him $10,000 and my bank account number. And you're like, no, 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 that's a scam. Oh, stop it. You're crazy. He doesn't say anywhere in the email that it's a scam. Plus, he made a promise with his pinky. How many times have politicians promised us, both Republicans and Democrats, have promised us the moon and given us Detroit? No offense, Detroit, but, I mean, does your electricity even work anymore? You keep on voting in the same people. And in Detroit, the median home price now is $7,500. In 1965, the politicians said Medicare would cost us $9 billion by 1990. The actual cost? $66 billion. But don't worry, they were only off by $57 billion. Obama's current plan is $1.6 trillion. If it goes as well as the other government, government medical programs, <laughs> or, you know, as well as cash for clunkers, it will only cost us $13 trillion. Unless government makes up that gap with higher taxes on coffins, we can't afford universal health care. That is part of what you feel in your gut. You know it's unsustainable. You know it doesn't make any sense to say we got to spend money to make money the way we're spending money. I need to ask you a very important question. $13 trillion, the number I just gave you, that's an actual number based on the errors of the past. Now, could they be right? Could it be $1.6 trillion at the end? Sure. Do you really think it will be? Would an error of, let's just say, $8 trillion, would that be something that would be reasonable for them to make based on their past performance? Yes. If we were $8 trillion short, would that cause an emergency in this country? Remember, never waste an emergency. If we have a shortage of money and health care, would it be an emergency? 
You decide. Now hold on to that answer for a second. Do you have your answer? Here's why I ask. When we are short of money, we will be short of medicine. And then someone has to decide who gets what. Who in government will be influencing and making these life and death decisions? Right now, it's the organizers, the advisors, and the czars. AARP members. I have nothing against AARP. It's a fine organization, but something is not right here. And you must call AARP and demand answers to these questions. No accusations, just answer the question. Who makes life and death decisions here? One of the people currently that is a health policy advisor to President Obama. Got it? Advising the president on health care. He happens to be the brother of Rahm Emanuel. His name is Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel. I can't tell you how much I feel. We are taking on some of the most powerful organizations and powerful people on planet Earth. Dear God, please listen to this. Ezekiel Emanuel. He is only one out of the three people that we have found that are currently at the White House who believe in this kind of thinking. Listen carefully. He just wrote this in January of this year. Quote, when implemented, the complete live system produces a priority curve on which individuals aged between roughly 15 and 40 years get the most substantial chance whereas the youngest and oldest people get chances that are attenuated. The complete live system justifies preference to younger people because of priority to the worse off rather than instrumental value. But even more disturbing is this chart. Ezekiel added it into his article in January of last year. If you look at the chart, you will see the probability going up is the probability of intervention, getting some sort of medical treatment. You'll see if you're very, very young or very, very old, about 55 years old, your chances of getting care not healthy. Now, another czar in the media that they have uh, ignored is Cass Sustine. In the Columbia Law Review in January 2004, now this is the second guy currently advising the president. In the, in the Law Review in 2004, he wrote, quote, I urge that the government should indeed focus on life years rather than lives. A program that saves young people produces more welfare than one that saves old people. I want you to understand this is an emergency program. I have more amazing quotes for you coming up in this few minutes, but I want to make it very, very clear. What these people are talking about is how to ration in the case of an emergency. They define that as a shortage, a shortage of kidneys, hospital beds, or flu vaccine. A shortage. But what we have to remember is universal health care creates another shortage, a shortage of money. And when we are out of money, these people will begin making the rules governing your health care. Now, I don't know if President Obama believes any of this crazy stuff. But I also don't know why, if he didn't, he would appoint at least three people that are currently czars or advisors in the White House that do believe this stuff. Never in my life would I appoint people who believe in things like this. I mean, I, I wouldn't have you go get a soda for me if you believed in stuff like this. Why has no one in the media told you about these people? Why hasn't AARP brought them to your attention? Maybe that mob and manufactured anger isn't manufactured. Maybe it's just Americans across the political spectrum sensing in their gut these people are moving too fast. What are they hiding? What is really going on? And something just isn't right. Jonah Goldberg is the author.